Hello and welcome to episode two of the Talking Kit podcast, which essentially made for Football Kit Fanatics by free Football Kit Fanatics. I'm Aaron and as always, I'm joined by James. Hello. <laughs> Just hello. <laughs> what more do you need? <laughs> I don't know what all else. Uh, and obviously, as you might see down below, is uh, Sean. How you doing, Sean? I'm good. Keeping the other two yeah. afloat. <laughs> Raising the roof, as always, yeah. Uh, so how have we been, boys, since the uh, the first episode? How, how did we find it? Yeah, couldn't wait to start the next one. Yeah. It's been, it's been good. We've had some really good feedback. We've already... Uh... Had a few people on board with with the ideas. It's nice to know it's. I mean, I knew that kits were quite popular anyway, but uh, to see some of the nerds come out the woodwork is it's always nice to see. That's what you want, isn't it? Really. So, uh, looking on some of the stats, and obviously we've had a listener from Argentina. Now, either of you know someone from Argentina? Because I don't. I know that. Um, no, and I know this isn't a Spanish speaking uh, podcast either. So, fair play to them. I mean, so, some man can get mumbled up. It sounds a bit Spanish sometimes, but I know for a fact I don't speak much Spanish. Um, and also... Some ex-Nazi war criminal. They all went to Argentina, didn't they? <laughs> but perhaps that, that's what it is. Why Loving the, the black German Germany kit that we mentioned. Exactly. Adidas, Adidas um, as well, German. We also had a listener from Sweden as well. So, uh, we did. Um, what I say, a big... A big hello to Jesper from Sweden. I don't think it's Blomqvist, but I can't confirm or deny that. No, it doesn't look like Blomqvist. <laughs> but, um, but it's great to have yeah. him on board. He said he was looking forward to Yeah, he said he was looking forward to episode two. So um, I hope he's listening or watching or both. Um, so yeah, big shout out to you. Everyone in Sweden, everyone all around the world, wherever you listened. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll be doing a lot more. Um, so do you want to talk do- about our shirts? Go on, what are you saying, Jay? We should do a Jesper tribute show. Swedish kits. You've, you've, as our, as our you've number had, one fan. Okay, you've um, possibly you've kind of made us no, do. I know he's got a club now. team, and we'll uh, do, <laughs> do our research. <clears throat> Looking on his Instagram, he's got like he's a, he looks like he's a, an avid uh, collector. Looking at some of his shirts, so hey, if he wants to do a top five, he wants to do um, a kit. Simon's send us five shirts. I'll be happy we'll to review them. It. Absolutely, hundred percent. We can get that going. Why not? Let's do it. Um, <clears throat> I was going to say, quickly run through our shirts today, if you want, that we've got on. Um, do you want to start, James? Yes, I'm sporting the Dutch 98-2000 uh, away kit. It is an original. Um, so it's got all the labels on it. Sometimes I just have the replicas, but this is the um, it's a genuine article. No name or number on the back, but yeah, I am a fan of the Dutch kits. As we said in the uh, last episode, I believe. And Sean, Sean. What, what have you got on? Being a Stockport fan, I've got the um, goalkeeper and a goalkeeper. A goalkeeper top from the 96 97 season. Uh, Stockport went up to Division One, as it's called. I don't know if you remember Paul Jones. He used to wear this. That's Welsh International. And it's genuine as well. Still got the uh, nice. Well, we know it is. I believe me and, me and James bought you that. You did for Christmas, so yeah. So I remember gift. that Christmas gift for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I bet it was. I remember that badge. That's the badge I associate most with Stockport. That, that's, that's, about the time, that's about the time you started going and became it's a very. It's a very Glasgow Rangers back in the day as well. They had that that little badge. Yeah. But that's when you started sporting them back back around then, yeah. When I had no team before, yeah. Yeah, you was in the wilderness. In terms of supporting a team, <laughs> having a scarf doesn't mean you didn't have a previous no, club. It so. means nothing because we've got evidence of when you did have a team, which we will be getting uh, very, very soon. Uh, I'm supporting, well, not supporting, I'm supporting a Pharrell slash Adidas human race uh, United shirt that's got a blurred badge and stuff like that. I need to do that tip, don't I? I'll leave one. Um, I was in a rush to put, I put most of some shirts up, as you can see behind me. Um, Jamaica shirts home and away from a few years ago. That's going to be relevant later in the show. Um, but no, yeah, for, it's nice that we all we all wore shirts. I like that. Yeah, of course. That's what we do here, isn't it? That's what we do. Okay. Um, 
so moving on swiftly, we'll, we'll talk about this next bit because I imagine you two are more upset than I am, or maybe you've got over it now. But we'll obviously the first episode we were talking about the Euros, mm -hmm. uh, episode, uh, before at the time of recording, it was England in the semi finals, was it? Yeah, we'd just beaten Denmark, just beaten Denmark, yeah, so just in the semi finals. Uh, since obviously since then, as it transpired, they got to the final and got beat on penalties by Italy. So how are we feeling, I was, boys? I was so excited for it. Um, it's probably going to be the best day of my life. I was working up to it. Like I was like, "What am I going to do all week? I'm just going to be on a cloud." But yeah, the next day, I just couldn't. People in work were trying to chat to me about it, and I was just like, "Fuck off!" I couldn't talk to them about it. I felt like a proper antisocial person the next day. I thought it was um I thought it was a good final to be honest. Obviously England took the lead early and it was exciting. Um I think as the game went on it was only going to be one winner really. It's almost like England wanted penalties, which just seems crazy. Um but yeah, I think Italy would probably deserve it winners as as much as that pains me to say. I think they just started to dictate the game, especially from the second half onwards, and England just ran out of ideas a little bit. Um, you're not be, you're not winning a penalty shootout against Donna Rummer. He's so big. He's massive. Like you say, you say that old adage he feels a goal. He genuinely filled the goal. Like I'm not surprised England England missed three. Um, but I'm good. I was good. Like I, obviously, as the tournament went on and on and on, you know, I kind of uh, started supporting England a little bit more. Even went and bought England shorts. Couldn't find. I couldn't find a shirt. Also have face paint for the final. <laughs> I got roped into that. I got roped into that. Was that? Aaron I was obviously fully into it. Yeah, with the face I'd, paint. Saint George it looked like on a, the looked like a pro job. Who did it? Uh, it was Han Hannah, my girlfriend, and her oh, mum. She's, an she's an artiste, isn't she? Oh, they are. They're, they're very uh, artistic. That family. So, yeah. I, well, you know, I was drunk the night before. I started drinking early that day. I was quite excited throughout the day. Actually, I woke up. What song did I have in my head? Um. Southgate, you're the one. Sweet, no, Sweet Caroline, I had, I had in my head. Um, I don't, I don't get that. Why is that associated with England? I don't think they just they just adopted it, they? and they turned it into a chant. But I've actually turned the lyrics into a song about my dog, but I won't get into it now. But it's for another um, podcast. <laughs> I say that for me, dog past, uh, dog, uh, dog cast. I was going to say. Speaking of, that. sorry to interrupt you, Aaron. Speaking of no. dogs and stuff like that. I, if it's okay with Sean, I feel like we should upload the video of Sean with uh, his furry friend from the semi-finals. Some of them. Uh, it is, it is well, it's gold. It's pretty much decided that now, isn't it? I can't go back Absolutely on that. Absolutely brilliant. Now we're in a video, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, maybe, maybe one day. It was the Denmark game, wasn't it? And you had um, your pooch next to you, Sean. Um, your excitement, obviously, was reflected onto the dog. And, yeah, well, I mean, we'll... we'll Put that on the socials. For Basically, I was watch. doing a bit of a watch along mm -hmm. with a dog who doesn't understand football or excitement and can't handle either in an appropriate manner. <laughs> Leave him alone. But it was it was a good video. I wish wish my my dog had that like that. He's he's far too relaxed and he wouldn't really care like at all. But speaking of socials, if you look down below, uh, got it going across the screen where you can find us. We're literally everywhere. Yeah, absolutely everywhere. Um, who were like Fabrizio Romano? We're everywhere when it comes to because uh, he seems he seems to do the rounds. Don't he? He'll, he'll come out of one gem. And he's done every single podcast. I've seen. I'd love to know who Fabrizio story. Romano was. I don't know who. That you don't was. know who Fabrizio Romano? I don't know who he is? Oh my god! You are definitely he's a stop one. You are definitely yeah. national league. So he's like a uh, journalist, but he seems to get. Like all the transfers nailed on, he's on the inside of most of them. He knew about Jaden Sancho well before anyone else. Uh, and he has like a famous catchphrase: "Here we go." And like on Twitter, so when when he tweets anything, all all the, all the replies are "Here we go soon." Here we go, confirmed. Like, and that's what they're waiting for. So as soon as he tweets about a transfer, it says "Here we go." That's when you know it's happening. Okay. So it's pretty much confirmed at that point. Far too early for me. I right. get my transfer news from the National League paper. <laughs> I thought it was be on Teletext, yeah. Playing bamboozle. The, the pink paper as well, what was that? The pink? The Manchester the, pink? 
that was a Sunday league. Yeah, that was that like football. Oh, I, 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 I think it was like sport. I think it was like sport, wasn't it? Mm. Apparently, Manchester United recent pink kit was in dedication to that or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so now the Euros are over. All focusing on the league again now, yeah? Looking forward to the 2021. 2022. Three weeks away, isn't it? Four weeks it's away. not far. It's not far. So I'm sure United start pre season tomorrow. Um, I think Arsenal already have, haven't they? And a few few but, teams have you started. Got, and they get beat Arsenal off for burning, apparently. Yeah, I think 2 1. And they charge the fans saw, £8 for the privilege I to saw watch the it. highlights of that game. It was awful. Yeah, I think one of the <laughs> Hibs goals, the goalkeeper had a shocker. He was. I didn't even know what it was. I'm not too sure. Not too sure. Know. It should. It depends on your sport, though. Could be, it's nice for Burnley. Um, apparently, Roma scored ten in Mourinho's first game. Don't know who's a D team. Ah, right. Okay. So, yeah, I didn't know the league t- went that far down, but there we go. Neither did I. I saw a picture of um, Mourinho on the training ground with Smalling and Mkhitaryan, and they look like they're thinking, "Oh, for fuck's sake." Yeah, it, um, I, he posted up on his Instagram and it was like absolute, like he was trolling, like pair, of, like like the world, like a world's a small place or something like that. Absolutely trolling the pair of them, but I can't, yeah, can't imagine they're going to be there for long. I'm, Smalling, I bet Smalling was buzzing to go to like Italy and what do you call him, Smaldini? Small, yeah, Smaldini. Smaldini. Yeah, I, I couldn't say it wrong. Small dick. <gasps> That. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. If you could say it, can we stop <laughs> these Chris Smalling rumors, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but no, yeah, Mourinho trolling once again. So, we're all looking forward to the season. Well, obviously, we'll do a proper pre season season kickoff episode not too long. Um, but yeah, it's been um. It's been a good couple of weeks since we last recorded. It doesn't seem like it's been two weeks, though. I'll give you that. No. Gone very quick. I suppose the football... There is, there is still internationals going on, isn't there? So, which, again, we'll go into we'll shortly. Cut. But um, Yeah. And I feel like the players... Obviously, England went quite far, went to the final. So, this, they've still got their holidays. So, it's going to be quite a quick turnaround for a few clubs. I think, obviously, yeah. Rashford's having an operation. He's not going to be there, but you just wouldn't, wouldn't wonder about other players sort of across the Premier League if they'll actually be in any starting lineups for the start of the season straight away. Right. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I'm looking forward to it all. It's been too long. Full full capacity again. Got my I'm season to ready. To next, I'm looking forward to the next World Cup. Let's get through the season first, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Not started that yet. Uh, all right. So we're going to do a little new feature. So should we do a bit of the. Uh, TKN. Yeah? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. So TKN <clears throat> is basically talking kit news. We were trying to come up with in some of the pilots, we were going to do like kit news or something like that, daft, aren't we? So I'll just kind of abbreviate it to TKN and just we'll just leave it at that. I've got, we could get some um could do it as a video and I'll dress up as a newsreader and do some some ITN news or something like that. Or copyright. Jim White, for, like a Jim White tribute or something. I can't, I, can't, I, can't, put an accent on. I can't do it. It's Jim White. I can't do it. No, it's not. It's a yellow tie and, you know, a clock counting down. He, he's left now. He's left Sky now. So they'll need someone new, won't they? What's it? Hmm. What's it? Oh, I don't know about that. Um, but so yeah, it's basically we're going to give you some rundown of kits that have been released in, since the last episode. Um, as it, as the season is approaching, it is now obviously the time that's most exciting for kit fanatics like ourselves because kits are getting dropped every single day. Is it dropped or released? I know the in thing is to say, oh, it's just been dropped. Kits they dropped a new kit like they dropped an EP. It's it's not you released the kit, aren't you? That Pretty works. Much. Okay, thanks, Sean. Um, so I'm just going to run down f- through five, which I think have been the best releases the last couple of weeks, or last, especially a few days, especially this week. There's one one after the other. Um, the first one, which I think is pretty cool, pretty innovative. Um, again, it's someone getting involved in the show, which we love. Uh, so, yeah, please do like and subscribe, review, leave a comment, 
get involved in the show. Let us know if you ever agree or disagree with anything we're saying. But we do like people getting involved because then we can obviously give it to you and see if you agree. So we had someone on Instagram in, uh, message us um, called Fraser. And he said that we need to talk about um, this kit. I'm just going to get it up for you now. Um, and it's quite innovative. The reason it's innovative is because it's got something on there that I've never seen before. So this is hashtag United. You all know who hashtag United are, don't you? Yeah. You YouTube. Was it started by a YouTuber? Yeah. yeah. Um, Spence. Spence FC. Um, and they've moved over to Hummel. They were at Adidas last, last year. Um, they moved over to Hummel. But as you can see, the kit has actually got a QR code on it. Um, which is, like I say, which is rather different. Um, Just out of curiosity, does that work from here? I think, do you want to give it a go? I think it does as well. It does. I think we're all going to do it. I can't. Takes you to their website, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Both just tried it live. Go straight to the hashtag website, which is pretty cool. Um, I like the hashtag shirts. I was, I was looking at the ones last year, the Adidas ones. But the Hummer one's quite nice. I quite like that one. Um, there we go. Another little... I'm sure the away one should be on here as well. The away one's quite nice. The away one is a... Is it, is it black? Black, is black it and white? white. I think it's black and white, isn't it? The away one. No, I can't find it. It's not there. But, um, yeah, what... Viva la hashtag. It's uh, quite a nice shirt. Would you agree? Yeah, very nice. I reckon yeah. clubs will be uh, for the, the people well. listening on audio, it's sort of blue and yellow. I'm assuming that's incorporating with hashtags, original colours. Yeah, the colours in it. I'd say done by Hummel. Um, there's a QR code go straight to their website. I quite like that idea. Um, puts puts a name out there. Like I say, not, nothing I've seen before. Um, so yeah, they've got loads, yeah. Of, loads of followers as well. They've got more followers than a lot of League Two teams, and they're like eighth tier, aren't they? Or is that? I think they yeah, I don't know, I don't know what tier they're in. Quite far, quite far down. Do you remember yeah. that guy who had a hashtag tattoo? And it took it to uh, there's an Argentinian guy. Oh, a QR code tattoo. And he had a QR ta yeah, sorry, a QR code tattoo, and it took you to a YouTube video of Argentina winning the like uh, the Conca Cup. Oh, is it Boca Juniors winning the Copy Libertadores or something. I think it was Boca Juniors. Oh, yeah, didn't Boca Juniors. Someone and then, asked someone uh, to report it. So everybody yeah. reported it. And so the tattoo is just obsolete now. It's just a tattoo yeah. that goes to nowhere. That's yeah. a shame. That's a shame. That's like that's having like, for you. That's worth getting your ex tattooed on you in it and like seeing it there every day. It's got so just find someone. Just find someone else with the same name. Problem solved. Yeah. Or get a dog. Call it that. That name. Yeah. And... There's ways around it, Sean. So you can get rid of that tattoo, mate. Don't worry about it. Hey, I'm ink free. I've got virgin skin. <laughs> virgin skin. <laughs> I've been in touch. Like Richard Branson's new thing. <laughs> yeah. Virgin skin. Skin like suit. Madonna, yeah? Is that what you're saying? Richard Branson. Play suit by Richard Branson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to swift, swiftly move Kits. on. So then, the next kit we're looking at, um, I'm a fan. I don't know if you used to will be. Um, it is the new Barcelona uh, away shirt for 20, 21-22. It's like a, a violet colour, would you say? Um, very, bar very Barbie for me, that. Very Barbie. I, I quite the, like it. Is the badge like drawn on almost? I don't think it's drawn on. No, I don't think it's drawn on. I think it's sort of there's a there's a word for it. Incandescent, is it or something like that? I think it is. Uh there is a there is a word for it. I mean, embossed. I, embossed. Yeah, but it's nice. It's quite a hot um shiny it's shiny badge. I like it. I'm a big fan. Probably won't buy it, but I like it nonetheless. I think Barcelona have had far better away in third kits than that. I'm not a fan. You think? Like I did. I did. I did tweet yesterday saying apparently it does smell of palm of violets as well. Um, it does. It does remind me of palm of violets, which are one of the worst sweets. Out it's there. that sickly purple color, definitely, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that very purpley yeah. vibe. 
I don't. I've never known of a purple kit before, Barcelona. So it's normally it's normally reserved for goalkeepers or referees that sort of color, isn't it? Yeah, you don't get many many purple kits. The only the only purple kit. Um, my... Sorry, you were going to mention the TV show, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to say that. Exactly. Harchester, the only purple kit is Harchester United, of course. Yeah. Great That's TV show reference. Great TV show. Yeah. But not, so you, neither of you are a fan on this one. You're not you're not feeling it. No, it's not worth the use, but it's not for me. Not for you two, no. All right, fair enough. We'll move on. We move, as the kids like to say. We move. So, but I'm surprised to have any players to uh, to wear that shirt, Barcelona, the way they're going at the minute. Um, that... Sorry, go on, go on, Sean. Said bye bye, Messi. He signed a new deal. Well, apparently not. Apparently Five he's signed a new deal, deal now, yeah. Yeah. I need, I need to keep up, don't I? But cutting his salary, so... Yeah. What is that? He don't need any more money, does he? No, I'm sure he'll, I'm sure he'll survive. Not, none of them do. No. But they're looking to... Uh, well, if you believe the rumours, they're looking to swap Griezmann with uh, Saul. But um, it's sending... That letter call Madrid. But I can't see him wanting to do that. He's on, what, 225 grand a week over at Barcelona. He won't make that at, um, at, at letter call Madrid. But the funny thing about that Barcelona and the Messi contract is that he's taking a 50% wage cut, but they're giving him a five-year deal, which I mean, he'll, he'll be there till 39, which makes no sense. I can't see him playing till 39 myself. If anyone can, it'll be someone like him, won't it? Ronaldo, well, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. You know, he had a lot of like hormones earlier, didn't he? So it's, it sort of messes you up when you get older. Not like Ronaldo, who's like organically he, old and good. He he doesn't Messi look like, like the sort of player you could like convert into some sort of like quarterback type holding midfielder, does he? Going to spray passes. No. Set piece no. specialist, maybe. Just leave him in the corner. When a corner comes, he just takes it. <laughs> yeah. Get him well, on for free kicks. Bring him up. Bring him on for pen. football. Yeah. yeah. Put it to him, see what they say. Might be a way. They're trying to change all the rules in football. Why not? They'll probably do it for Messi, no one else. Mm. Bring him on. Stick him so on that... Ibrahimovic's shoulders, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? Uh, the next one, then, we'll move on, is our team, James. It's a brand new shirt from Manchester United, which looks a bit like a pyjama top. Can't say I'm a big yeah. fan. We're in a WhatsApp group, aren't we? And we were discussing some of the recent releases and I th we think that plain is the new in now for teams. Just very plain. Yeah. Nothing too abstract. You will always get the odd one out there that is, um, you know, quite heavy on the eyes. But this is a throwback to that. I do like the long sleeve and the white... Um, Cuffs. The white cuffs. I also am yeah. a big fan of the socks, which you can't quite see in this picture. But the yeah. socks are really nice. Uh, we've sort of the like a gold devil emblem or yellow, if you want to call it that. I think the kit will, the, I think the top will grow on me as the season goes on, but it's not the best United kit. I mean, it's instantly improved by the fact Chevrolet are no longer there. I'm not a big fan of their team viewer logo, but absolutely shits all over the Chevrolet one. So instantly it's better. Like you, I do like that. Obviously it's taken from the 1960s. Uh, which I do like. I love the fact that long sleeves are now coming back in because there was a, there's been a period where they haven't been worn at all by by players. Obviously, they're wearing base layers with short sleeves, but I think there was a couple of players in the Euros, Sane for one, and I think Kai Havertz, both on Germany, were wearing long sleeve shirts. So I hope it's now the resurgence and the rebirth of the long sleeve shirt because I do think they uh, they are great. But I, yeah, like you, not a big fan of this shirt at all. Um, won't be buying it for obvious reasons. Hashtag glazes out. Hashtag not a penny more. Um, but it is not great, and it looks very cheap. I mean, it's got like obviously the the two kind of stripes of two different kinds of stripes down the the kit. Not a, not a big fan of it nah, at all. It, it looks like the Tops you find lost property in PE a little bit. They've been there since the sixties. Yeah, no, I agree. Sm smell like cats. <laughs> oh, we used to buy football magazines and used to have those 
catalog pages at the back to buy stuff for your five aside team. It kind of looks like those mm. shirts you'd buy. But yeah, yeah. Pogba, Pogba there looks the happiest I've ever seen him at United. So are he's hailing a cab to leave to go to PSG or if maybe he's he spotted asking. the plane that's coming over with Varane in it. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, yeah, he's, he's landing the plane with Varane. Why not? But he looks very happy. Like I said, happiest I've seen in there at Manchester United for a while. So we're not we're not rating that. None of us are rating that kit. No, I'd probably say I prefer it to the Barcelona one if you push me for an answer, but not a huge fan of it. Hopefully, it will grow on me throughout the season. I think I think it's better than the better than the Barcelona one. Not better than the, the hashtag one so far. Uh, we'll get through these ones quick quickly then. Probably one of the best one I'm I'm growing to love. I didn't like it at first. Is the new Inter shirt. Which instantly you recognise that it's not got Pirelli on there, uh, which mm. is which is weird to look at an Inter shirt with Pirelli not being on there. They've obviously been there for twenty odd years as the uh, the main sponsor, uh, so it's no longer there. Also, you might notice it's not black; it's two different shades of blue. Uh, the lighter blue looking sort of like a snake skin. Yeah, it's like a python probably. almost, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Have they not? Have they not got any sponsor then? Is that it? Uh, I think they've got one on, on the reverse, down at the bottom, near the ass. Um, I think is it Lenovo, uh, but it, at the moment they've not they've not got a main sponsor. Um, whether one will come in or not, I don't know. Uh, it's also the first. Probably, it, it's probably uh, defunct then, or they just. I don't think I don't think no they longer. are. No, I just don't think they'd no longer sponsor them. Probably, I'd, probably I'd, a massive. Well, uh, sorry, you'd always associate that. Pirelli with Inter, so it's a shame. You would. If you could pick a, a sponsor each to go on it. Who would you pick? Continental. Sticking with the uh, the tires. Okay. Unless they want to do a really cheap sponsorship with Talking Kit, um, they might as well leave it blank as far as I'm concerned. If they're not going to have Pirelli. Don't need an answer from me because you've perfectly summed it up. Talking Kit or nothing. Um, I'll happily let... And they can pay us. We we won't pay them. We'll pay... They pay us as well. But it's a nice shirt. I didn't like it at first, the fact that there was no black on it at all, but it's winning me around now. It's actually quite a nice, smart... There is black uh, on the collar, yeah. isn't there, on the sleeves? Yeah, but the stripes... As a finish. You, you would probably get into the blue and black stripes, don't you? Um, but it's obviously got the new the new, uh, the new, new badge on there as well, which is winning me around a bit. At first, it looked a bit weird compared to the old one, but no, I, I like it now. I'm, weird, I'm getting one round, so... I left this second to last because I think it is one of the best ones that uh, that I'm showing to you. Uh, and we'll quickly get to the last one. By far the, the fa- by far the best one for me. Um, it was released this week. And it's just, for me, I, they call it an instant classic. I definitely think it is an instant classic. And it is the brand new shirt from the Dutch Giants. Ajax of Amsterdam. Willem Tway? Oh, Ajax. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, it, it's a pretty... The design of it is pretty, a pretty standard Ajax shirt. Obviously, the the white and red with the white in the centre. Um, still still by Adidas. Uh, and obviously, Zigo as their main sponsor. But the main thing about it for me is the fact that it's got the the classic logo. From the seventies, I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. Um, proper old school looking logo, uh, and they're also going to have an old school font as well uh, from from around that period. Uh, the, the block, the block lettering and block numbering uh, looks pretty class. Uh, for me, that that's probably one of the best kits of this release so far. For me, I'm absolutely made it's not up. Bowling it. you over. What what's not bowling you over, Sean? What's wrong I mean, with it? There's nothing wrong with it, but okay, it's it's nice. But the other the I the Inter Milan, Inter Milan one that was a cracking release. Okay, I, was I, was cracking, I would say yeah. I was the ones you've shown Inter Milan is up there, and then I would say closely followed by this. I do prefer that badge. Um, what does I like how the Adidas is obviously is in red, but they've it it works in the in the lines of the, the red and the white there. They've not yeah. sort of compromised on that, which I like. Um, it's not it's not hugely different to the one they probably wore last, last season, but... I, I mean, they're always going to look the same, aren't they? Because it, it's a very standard red and white stripes, isn't it? I guess. 
Yeah. But I just, yeah. I just think the badge adds so much more to it. But I do like the obviously the the badge they have previously, obviously, just because the story behind it. Do you know the story behind the Ajax badge with the 11 lines? The 11 lines on the badge thing. Make up the 11 make, players. Make up the 11 players. Yes. Yeah. Which, you know, gets you right there, doesn't it, in the fields. But I'll do that this old school badge. It is, it is class. Just a classy club, Ajax, from top to bottom, aren't they? Uh, obviously, last season when they won the title, they melted down the trophy and give them all, give a piece out to each of the season ticket holders. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So they melted it all down. The trophy. trophy. So the, the the trophy that they won for winning the league was yeah, melted do, down. Am I being stupid in thinking that there's only one trophy? No, nah, yeah, you get one. You get one to put in your museum, don't you? Okay. Like if, if you go, if you go to United's museum, for instance, there'll be thirteen Premier League trophies uh, that you can you can look at. Um, same with the European Cups. So the one they get presented by the league, they would. Yeah, it's like not, the one um, when you go to Stockport County. They've got a, a snooker table in one of the rooms. <laughs> Hat rack and a, a carvery. <laughs> nice carvery. They've got carvery. Amazing. Um, so yeah, they, they melted it down and they distributed it between the. Uh, Season ticket holders, so they got a piece of the uh, the title, which is nice. I think it's all because obviously no fans were there for the season, so yeah. So there we go. That that was the last kit for uh, a little bit of TKN talking kit news. How'd that go, lads? You all right? So you like that or what? What are we doing? What are we saying? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. The when the when there's more releases, obviously just keeping us afloat with all the yeah, all the new I mean, kits. I think, when, I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good for weeks yet. There's ones dropping all the time. Um, so should we get into a bit of Kit Simons? Let's do Let's it. Do it. I'm excited. Okay, so as we told you last week, or last week. Last episode, it's uh, Kit Simon. So this is where we review some kits. But well, this time we're going to give him a score out of um, five Kit Simons. Kit Simon's obviously ex uh, Manchester City and Fulham player. Both City, didn't it? And Wales. Welsh international, yeah. Welsh international, not Welsh at all, though. Apparently, no. <laughs> so uh, James is going to take the lead on this this one this week or this episode uh, and tell us. What theme is picked for his kits? Yeah, so um, I want to. I'm, I'm going to butcher this. Is it Concacaf or Concacaf? Concacaf. Right. I got it I'm spot on, mate. Yeah. Concacaf Gold Cup, which obviously is sort of the North American teams lining up against each other internationally. Am I right in saying that? Um, so I'm just going to go with a few of those kits. I'm not too sure what order Aaron has got them in, uh, but we'll have a little look through. What was nice about these teams is they generally have three kits. Home away third, uh, not in all cases, but most cases. So I've just took a few of those that we can just go over and have a little look at. Um, so yeah, if you want to pull the first one up, Aaron, and we'll go through yeah. it. Okay, so this is New Balance, and it's Costa Rica's home jersey, as they'll say in North America. Um, not normally a big fan of New Balance stuff, just in general. Uh, no real reason behind that, other than growing up as a kid you tend to avoid things like Gola and New Balance in my head is that sort of make. Anyway, uh, I'm sure people will uh, <laughs> slate me for that, um, Liverpool fans, etc. But yeah, New Balance, I, I quite like this. I'm not too sure what the idea is behind the printing on it. Um, they've gone with, with their three kits. It's red, white and blue. Obviously, they're the national colours. But yeah, this one, quite nice. I imagine it's a tight-fitting uh, top. So perhaps not one for me as a, a couch potato fan, but uh, no, I do like I do like the colours on this one. Thoughts, Sean? It looks like a little bit of a leopard print, doesn't it, in the background? It does a little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I agree with the New Balance theory. Um, it's all right, yeah, plain. Does the job. I, I, thought, I think New Balance is all right. I'd like, I'm not, I can't say I love New Balance, but I think some of the the kits are all right. All the Liverpool ones were crap, obviously. And uh, yeah, they've obviously bad. just gone over to who is it? Roma. They took over. Some of the the Porto ones they've done were really nice. The home ones, although they did do a brown one, 
which wasn't great. But overall, I think they're all right. The boots are rubbish. Not for me. Um, I know they've signed. Who have they signed recently? Is it Sterling and Saka? They've both got recently on contract. But no, it's okay. Like I say, the, the leopard print, it's all right, isn't it? It's, it'll do. I mean, it's not going to win any prizes for best kit, but yeah, it's all right. It's not It's not a bad shirt. What we're saying in score, I'm gonna, if I'm giving it a score, I'm going to say two out of five kit Simons. I was going to say two myself. Um, yeah, I probably, I'd probably go for two as well. You know, it's not Looking offensive. It. That's what I'm saying. It's not offensive. No. <laughs> Last one thing, then, Sean. At least. So, have you watched any Concacaf games so far? I'm gonna, I'm gonna imagine you both. Can't say, say I have. To, I'll be honest with you, I can't say I have. I've not had much time. Yeah, I do imagine like it's a, um, it's a three AM jobby. You know, a bit like staying up for a Tyson some fight of them, or something. No, yeah, I think some of them have been on quite early, like 10, 11 times. I know Jamaica played the other day, one, two, nil. Um, that's why I've obviously got the Jamaica shirts in the back, supporting Jamaica uh, through it. Uh, so your next one is this one, James. Ah, okay. So Umbro's collaboration with El Salvador. Uh, one thing I want to pick up on this because I do actually like the color combination. It's sort of like a a slate grey, if you like, with gold. Um, El Salvador don't wear their national badge. They don't have a national badge. It tends to be this this ES, obviously for El Salvador. But it just reminds me of like a coach. It's almost like coach initials on the on the. Yeah, yeah. Eric Quite Smith. An interesting concept. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Eric Smith there, the uh, young, the young coach for El Salvador. But um, it's quite nice. It's quite a nice kit, isn't it? This is their third kit as well for the tournament, so it may not even get seen. But I do quite like that. Nice. It's very very nice. I, I do like that one. Um, but there is always a stigma with grey kits, though, isn't there? That's the only thing. Well, if you're Sir Alex Ferguson and you're getting beat at half time, yes. Like you ping a ball seventy yards to the opposite winger. Because you couldn't see him. If you if you believe Fergie though, but I don't think that I think that was all bollocks, wasn't it? I don't think any of that's true. You know what I mean? Well, I know what you mean, but I don't. It looks more black than grey to me. That that shirt. You think? I think it looks quite. Oh, it's like a grey colour, but um, no, it's it's, 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 a, it's a nice kit. It's a nice kit. I'm a fan. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, yeah. and for me, I always, go, I always that... go by the premise. Sorry, like if you can wear it on a night out, it's a nice kit, and I would wear it on a night out. Would you? Despite the fact it's got E S on it. I put S L on it. So what one thing about the El Salvador kits as well, did you hear the story that uh, there would be uh, there was a shipment of them being taken over to America, I think it was, and and uh, they got stopped by the police or customs or whatever, because they felt they thought it was uh loads of counterfeit shirts when really they'd just not been released and Umbro were like going mad because Oh really? Yeah, all the massive shipment of the home shirts, the blue home shirt had been uh, been seized as a uh, potential counterfeits. So that made it. I think that may have been made up just to get a bit. Who's going to buy an El Salvador shirt unless you're from there? Really? Yeah, I you would know, buy that, that one. That one. I, just yeah, as that a, one. As a fan, but... That one you would, but maybe not the white or blue one. Yes, yeah. no. unless you're Eric Smith and you just want to name with your initials on somewhere. <laughs> cheap, <laughs> maybe. Cheap. It saves you getting your name on the back of a shirt, doesn't it? It does. It does. Um, um, so for me, I'm going to give that three out of five, Kit Simons. Mm, I'd agree. Three. <laughs> uh, three's all round. I'd, I'd agree with that. A three, three out of five. Uh, better than the Costa Rica one, that's for sure. Definitely. Uh, so your next one, Sean, uh, James, even. A bit controversial, this one. Yes, uh, this is Mexico, and this is their home shirt, believe it or not. So, obviously, they would normally sport a green colour, um, but I've actually gone for this, which they called it Real Magenta, uh, which is sort of the pink-purple colour you can see there, and obviously the black as well. Um, I did wonder if it was so, sort of like a traditional Mexican print, which they've had previously, but it's not. It's just part of the design. Um, I, I like it, but I am a traditionalist, and I feel that Mexico should be in a green shirt. Yeah. I saw yeah. online that I couldn't find it for the episode, but someone had mocked it, like uh, they'd put the pink bit green to see what it looked like. 
and it was an it would have been a five it would have been a five out of five kit simons if it had oh been really green. if it was green it, it looks it looks really nice really really nice as green uh but like you say with the real magenta it's bad i don't i don't they, they, a couple of seasons or a couple of years ago they had a, just a black home shirt so they do tend to move away from the green but you associate mexico with green don't you you know they're always, yeah. trying, they're always trying to get a green card aren't they What's it all? Or guacamole? Yeah. Or just shirts? Oh yeah, green. Green for me is a winner. This, it's not not for me. This one, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Adidas oh. for this one, and it's you know Adidas. They're always behind sort of. It's like a trading something. unusual kit. Sometimes they try and they try and break the mold on some things. Perhaps Mexico have just said, you know what? Give us you give take, us what you want. We're, you we're take the lead. With, it it know. does look like a pre-match top. You're right there, Sean. Um, it, but it does look it does look like an Aztec sort of pattern. Mm. Um, but obviously, like you say, James, it's just it's just not. It's just how they've designed the shirt for them. Um, Sean, would you wear that on an on a night out? Um, actually, I think I would. I won't wear it playing yeah. football, but I'd wear it on a night out, maybe pre drinks, and put my El Salvador top on <laughs> for the main event. Yeah. 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 So for me, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two out of five. Kit Simons again for that one. Gonna go one. Yeah, I would go for. I'm gonna give it a one as well. To be honest with you, not for me. Fair enough. That's not a great shirt. Ruined by the pink. If it was green, it'd be a winner. Be an absolute winner. I was going to get your next one up now, James. Um, no problem. A couple more left in there. That was quite a few. Um, three left, I think. Three left. So we can rattle through them quite quickly, but my favourite yeah. is yet to come. Okay, then, James, uh, here's your next one. Okay, so this is the US, uh, the USA Nike kit this is their away kit they normally go for quite a plain and it is this time around as well quite a plain white kit um for their home kit um this one is their away kit and i'm a big big fan of it um again when we talk about you know adidas with the mexico kit perhaps trying something a little bit different it doesn't work this for me is unusual but i, I quite like it i don't know what you guys think i, I like want to it see it's blue and red um, yeah look it's... Wade, if someone said that was purple i wouldn't argue definitely blue and red um, yeah, I, I like this a lot. Big fan. It's got the retro Nike um, symbol in there that a couple of the Nike teams had a few years ago. But it's got it says Nike. It's got the Nike underneath, back from the nineties. Uh, it's kind of got that. It's got a similar feel to United's away kit last season, the sort of zigzag zebra pattern. A bit of a mismatch, but obviously it's red and blue rather than black and white. I'm a big fan of this. Great kit. Um, yeah. USA USA tend to have some smart kits from Nike. Uh, yeah, I, the... love, I, love, I love American kits. Do you? The 94 one especially. <laughs> the denim one. Yeah. Yeah, great. That's a great kit. Great kit. But this is up there. Not as, not as great as that one. But this is up there. It's a nice shirt. Um, Pula Sitch in that one. Couldn't name you any other players from America other than him. But no, I like it. I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, so for me, I'm going to give this four out of five Kit Simons, guys. If we're doing half, so I'll do four and a half. Four and a half from Sean, we can do half. Do an half, so I'll give it a four and a half as well. I'm a big uh, big fan of that one. It's a great kit, definitely. I think we've got two more to go, I think, Aaron. Yeah, a couple more. It's getting on the screen for you. And your next one here now, coming up. Perfect. So uh, this is Jamaica's home kit made by Umbro. Yes. Um, yes. I mean, that perfect example there for you, Sean, of someone wearing it on a night out because he's in a pair of jeans. I'm not too sure if that's a player <laughs> or just a model. Um, but, yeah, it's got sort of the um, – it's incorporating the Jamaican colours, as always, but it's got sort of black and green on the sleeves uh, yeah. to finish. And also slightly on the uh, collar as well, uh, on the sort of on the shoulder, if you like, on the traps for any gym gym bunnies. Um, 
I quite like this one. It's a really nice kit. Uh, it's not too over the top. Obviously, it's in contrast to what you'd see with the US uh, second kit. Um, the away kit for Jamaica is identical, albeit it's green rather than yellow. Uh, much to like what you can see behind Aaron there, albeit it's um, Umbro this time for them. But I, I, I'm a fan of that kit as well. It's quite nice. Yeah. And if we are going off Sean's rule of thumb of would you wear it on a night out, I would say yes, probably. Definitely. I, I hope he, he is on a night out and he's not he's not warming up there because he struggled to warm up in them jeans. Don't know about you. Especially, yeah. if, Especially if it was a home game out. in Jamaica. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, he'd be roasting. You've got no chance. It, it reminds me of that meme of um, Lukaku when he can't trap a ball and he's wearing Timberlands and uh, jeans. Have you ever seen it? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he's at United and he's struggling to trap a ball, there's a big meme going around and he had like Timberland boots on and jeans and a hat backwards and stuff. That's what it reminds me of if, if you're saying he's going to go out. Um, no, I like it. Lukaku couldn't trap a bag of cement, could he? But Dude, nobody's, trying, trapping, you know? nobody's trapping a ball in a pair of Timberlands, are they? Maybe not you. Maybe not you. Don't you just punch it to safety, Sean? <laughs> or you'd ask someone else to kick it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my weak legs. Your weak <laughs> legs. Yeah. Maybe shave them a bit more aerodynamic. <laughs> so next kit, James. <laughs> yeah, well let's 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 score it. I'm gonna say if we're gonna give halves, I'm gonna say three point five for this one. I'll give it a three. I really like this. I like the simplicity of it. Uh, the fact that it's Jamaica as well is going to give it some extra points. Um, I want to give it a four. If it had been the away shirt, which I think it's black and green, isn't it? Um, I probably would have given it a four and a half. I really like that away shirt. But the home shirt is nice, smart, classy. Like you say, wear a nice pair of jeans, sat on a uh, on a fence, look, looking good. Uh, so Just on four, a side yeah, note. Four. Sorry, can, can you, what, what's your score there for it? Four, I'm going to give it. Four. Just on a side note, it'd be interesting to see the development of Jamaica's national team because they've got a new um, a new thing in place where they're going to try and recruit uh, British players potentially with Jamaican heritage. So you, obviously there was a few already in the England team for the Euros um, and you know people like Sterling, I believe, um, Calvin Phillips, etc., um, so it'd be interesting to see in the next five, six years how Jamaica fare in uh, tournaments moving forward. Yeah. I believe Matt, they were talking Mason Greenwood, they were looking to go for. Um, Mikel Antonio is apparently primed and ready to uh, play for him. Andre Gray, I think he's in the Gold Cup squad. Um, Leon Bailey is obviously at Le- Leverkusen. Uh, and also, which I found was... Hilarious, not hilarious, it's random. Ravel Morrison is in the Jamaica squad. Oh, for, wow, for he's, everywhere, in. he's getting everywhere. In. He's not, but he's not got a club at the moment, obviously, after leaving Sheffield United. Uh, was he at Middlesbrough? I love that though. Do you not love that when a player is a free agent but he plays still like in a big tournament? Like Gary Breen did it once, didn't he, for Ireland and stuff like that? Was that when Barcelona would come chasing him? Yeah, Barcelona were caught in him. Yeah, I think that's great. Uh, no, I love it. And I hope he does well. It's one, you know, it's one of them stories, Ravel Morrison, and you just hope he could settle and actually have a decent career. But he seems to be just can't settle anywhere. Doesn't really play. How old is he now? I want to say he's around twenty-seven. He must is be the same, same age, age as Lingard. Yeah, it must be around the same age as Lingard and Pogba, 27, 28 maybe. Just a shame he had all that Still talent. Time. Still time for him to peak. You never know. Like I say, Jamaicans recruiting. I'm always ready. Do you ever need uh, speed? I'm not so speed anymore. What position, Aaron? I don't think I could be a winger now. I, I, I'll probably get shunted. I'd probably get shunted to left back. Shut up, you, James. Yeah, I'd probably get shunted to left back now. Julian Dix. That's what I see you as. Julian Roberto Dix. Carlos, I, I was going to say myself. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, oh. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, well, if they need someone, I'm always there and the end of the phone. Not better to do. Talk to you two dickheads. I mean, in the nicest possible way, I said they changed the recruitment policy, not they need, you know, they're not San Marino. I don't think they're that. I don't oh, yeah. Know Come, on. Come on. Caribbean there's, like that. There's no need for that, is there? I play for San Marino. If they want, I'll give me a fucking <laughs> Give me some jeweled citizenship. <laughs> yeah. I'll go and marry a bird from over there. It's like, was there, a, there was a guy who played for Trinidad and Tobago, wasn't there, who his mum... 
was born on the island or something like that, and he played in the was, World B- Cup. It was Birchall, wasn't it? it was, yeah. It was Matt, oh, Matt Bircham, was it? Yeah. Two, he was like six. a right winger. Keep yeah. Back. Yeah, yeah, that's true. An interesting yeah. story. So, also, uh, what... talking of uh, South, uh, the Copa America, the uh, Blackburn player, Brereton, his mum's Chilean, and he went over, scored a couple of goals, didn't he, in the uh, Copa America? Yeah, yeah. That's about, it? Yeah, yeah. Another great story. Uh, so we're getting in, in, into your last kit. So we all we all scored that one, didn't we? Yeah. Yes, we yeah. did. Uh, and your last one is this one. This is again, it's Umbro. This is a home kit for Guatemala. Um, so again, if you're not viewing this, you should be on YouTube. But um, it's got sort of the diagonal stripe going from shoulder down to the hip, um, sort of across the heart, and obviously the. Um, national team logo as well. It's it's understated and it's quite plain, but it's still really it's still a really nice kit. You've sort of got the blue on the um, sort of on the neckline as well, and on yeah. the on the sleeves. Mm. Um, I quite like it. It's a yeah. it's, it's a clean, crisp kit, and obviously the the blue that goes across like the blue sash. It's almost like a girl on a hen do. Um, <laughs> it's a bit like the England kit, you know, like the. Retro England kit now that you see a lot of people in sort of that um the, the blue sort of one different shiny coloured blues. Yeah, from um, so really like this yeah. No, it's great. Yeah. You know what? Umbro have had one of the best comebacks I've I've ever seen. Like in terms like because 90s, great. Sort of middle two thousands, all right, disappeared a bit. And they've come back now, like say Jamaica was Umbro, uh, El Salvador is Umbro. Do a lot of the Brazilian teams, a lot of English teams again. Now I really, I really like Umbro. If if United were ever to go for another sponsor, I'd probably say Umbro. Umbro or Hummel for United, but Umbro for me, absolutely great. This kit is really nice. Uh, is this your favourite, Sean? Uh, James, this is this one. Um, to be fair, uh, the US would be my favourite. Although this is a close, this is this is closely behind oh. it. I think again, they've not they've not tried to overdo it and no. be, be stupid with it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give this uh, three and a half Kit Simons out of five. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll go for three three point five. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. I'll flirt around the three mark as well. I like the aquamarine and the. It actually looks like now I see I see a woman wearing it. It looks more like a woman's kit than a man's. But it's all right. Show you working. What do you mean by that? It's, <laughs> it's like feminine colours in it. And it sort of hugs her waistline a bit more than the man's. So my, my, the, the shape. My, Again, <laughs> Sean, Sean's insight onto these things, me and Aaron would have never picked up on. So No, no. But yeah, it's a nice kit. But yeah, I agree with you, James. US one's probably my favourite. Yeah, I think, I think we all scored it highest, didn't we? So I think we it's all like agree. A, yeah. yeah, like the crazy paving look. Yeah. No, it's great. Well done. I have some nice kits there. Um let us know what you think. Which one was your favourite? Did we miss any out uh, that you think were better that are going on during this uh, Gold Cup? Uh, comment, like and subscribe on YouTube or give us a review and comment if you're listening on the audio podcast. Uh, it's Talking Kit. Okay then, so we're uh, moving on swiftly to the next little segment of the show. Um, it's probably Sean's favourite bit. This is where he gets to um, have a flirt around different players. Uh, we call this one Suits You, Sir. And we just have a quick look at some of the kits um, that players worn in their in their career. And we just give you uh, a little look at them and a, we have a little chat about them. So we can uh, have a look to see which ones, are we, which ones we liked, which ones were the best. Um, so which one... So just throw up anyone, Sean, for you to have a look at. Well, I'm, I've chosen Thierry Henry, and I'm basically right. judging his kits as which I prefer him in, and who I like, what team I associate him in with. Um, so start with his first club, Thierry Henry, 1994 to 99. Don't really associate him with uh, Monaco, to be honest. Never really remember him playing for him. Um, I didn't really know him before Arsenal. Now, if you see the kit there, that's not Henri, that, to me. 
That's not why the touch is, that is very, very interesting from the Thierry there, isn't it? A it's almost like very faint under the nostril and then quite, quite dark yeah, sort of no. outside of his lips. It's almost like he's not reached full puberty yet and it's just about showing. He needs to shave it a few more times. Remember in school, you, yeah. you got told, shave, shave your tash, mate, it'll, it'll grow. Never happened. Never happened. He's also, but, he can tell it's sort of a, an old picture in the sense that he's still allowed to wear sort of a necklace while playing. Um, nice. I appreciate it's a photo shoot, but um, sort of one of those ones that you'd get on holiday somewhere trying to reinvent yourself. On a beach from a lucky, um, lucky man. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, a lot of sponsorship on there as well from looking at it at a glance. Sort well, of two on each I was, sleeve. I was going to bring that up. It's like very League One in it in the 90s. That yeah, I think sponsors they're not, they're and not, logos plastered everywhere. They're just the same now, really, aren't they? I think uh, French teams. A lot of sponsors on kits, apart from PSG, really, but mm. I think in some cut games, you throw up loads of new sponsors and stuff like that. But I, I do remember, obviously, I do remember him in the 90s. I know he played against United when Monaco knocked us out of the Champions League. Uh, him and Trezeguet were the strikers back then. But yeah, it's it's weird to see him with so much hair. Definitely. Yeah. It still yeah. looks like also it. that kit looks like the sort of kit that you'd get um that's not genuine again on holiday yeah. where you like yeah. everything's printed on rather than having the actual physical sort of embroidery on it. Itching or anything um, like that. Yeah, and it, it looks like you couldn't wash it properly or iron it because the iron would just go through it. <laughs> it was his um, first stint with Arsene Bender this as well. Arsene it was, Bender. yeah, you're right. It was. From um, Claire Fontaine. Oh. Who's Cl- uh, who, who, who? Claire who? Claire, Claire Fontaine, that, uh, the youth setup. Yeah, no, yeah. It sounds like you. Sounds like someone you knew. That's you know nice Claire. Claire yeah, Fontaine. Claire. Oh, you don't know old Claire Fontaine? No. I don't know. I'm gonna get actually, it. in real life. <laughs> um, so where where are you want to stop off next? Well, we'll go chronologically. We'll go to um, Juve next. Okay. Where he spent. A full season. Is that all it was? Just one season? And what I didn't realise until my research, this will rub Aaron up the wrong way. Do you know what number he was? Well, this number is... six. Oh, no. no wonder he just was, he, was he a left winger for Juventus? He was, he was, he was stuck on the left, yeah. Um, and also, the kit he wore that season um, is very... It's like Juve's worst attempt at a kit. Colours were massive. They had, have you got a kit there, Aaron? Yeah, I'm getting it up now for you, mate. Because I don't want to describe nothing. So, so I'm just trying to describe it. There you go. <laughs> You're going to have to anyway for the audio. The sponsor's not great. It's like you've lost the sponsor in that in those stripes straight away. Mm. Yeah. Just, Kappa. Kappa, yeah. It did bad kits, I think, then, back in the 90s. And oh, yeah, everything about it. Kits. The number, the... Well, it's the number the number he's wearing, his position he was playing, and I think he scored three goals that season. That's not on really that. No, it wasn't it wasn't great for him, was it? But you know, he did staff as a winger, didn't he? He wasn't until he went to Arsenal that he was converted into a striker. Um but no, you're right. I don't like don't like the fact that he's wearing number six at all. So, like, so that's the he's worst not, he's no in. He's no Jacques. Like, what year was he there? Was David's not there then? So he could have had six. Oh, think of all the great Italian centre halves that could have had number six that season, and they gave it to the left winger. Even I think David's would have still been there. Uh, there he is in a red number six. Um, yeah. yeah, even that number is just a bad colour. Like that, the, the printing of it. <laughs> like, you don't have red. Newcastle do that, don't they? Black and white stripes with red numbers. Why? Why do it? I don't understand why. That's it looks better when Newcastle did it with blue numbering at one point. Oh, yeah. Well, the but, next uh, one we're going to do, we'll move on. Um, his most famous club, and whenever you think of him, this is who you think of, it's Arsenal. Um, the kit I've put forward is the Dreamcast Sega one, because that's whenever I think of Henri and Arsenal, it's that. Yeah, different. Part, of a, part of a very good Arsenal side at the time, wasn't they? Yeah, yeah. 2003 that was from that kit. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree that I think of that one. I think of the um, the Invincibles one. The old one. 
Yeah, that, that's the one I remember him from. We kind of had that amazing season with Arsenal, obviously. Um, but no, it's a, it's, a, it's a good kit. And yeah, it, you know, I think most most Arsenal kits, you, you kind of think, oh yeah, it reminds me of Barmy that you wore. Because he was obviously the best player by a million miles. Yeah, even more Is that the season... Riding? Is that the season where Richard Wright and David Seaman sort of essentially swapped every other week in that? Yeah, and uh, I think Davos Zuka played the season before. I think it was the last kit as well. Was it that year? Where the the cannon on the Arsenal badge was facing... The right way. Yeah, and then they changed it, didn't they? They switched it around, which the obviously Arsenal fans didn't like. So yeah. It was the last yeah. season with the old badge. Yeah. That's what you're saying. But yeah, the Dreamcast sure was, was, very, yes. was very standout. And the away shirt had Sega on, didn't it, as well, at the same yeah. time? But no, a bit like good Coventry, kit. City. Coventry City did that, didn't they, with Suzuki and um, Izuzu? Izuzu, yeah, they did. You're right, they did. Yeah. Which everyone, everyone obviously remembers. Um, yeah, nobody remembers. <laughs> nobody's, ever, nobody's ever described it as Izuzu before, but I like it. <laughs> Izuzu. Well, next one. <laughs> yeah. The NY, the NY Red Bulls. No, it's not. Sorry, it's Barcelona. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, you didn't send me that is, one. He, this is the kit which, I don't know, made him elite, I think. Arsenal, Wait, Arsenal, have, always, Arsenal have always had whoa, kits. Oh, whoa, whoa. This kit made him elite. What are you talking about? He deserves to be in a kit like this. <laughs> like, on, right. like, think of it, Monaco and Juve and Arsenal. Never You've been... been you made great kits. Yeah, not the one he was wearing. Oh, well, okay. Um, <laughs> so he, like, this is him blossoming. This is him, like... You're saying he deserves this kit, this sort of yeah, kit? Yeah, he's a king. Okay. He needs to wear a decent throne, if you know what I mean. And this is his crown, is it? Yeah. It's actually the kit he won, he won the Champions League in, to be fair. I love the half and half. It's good. Yeah, it's, it's have, nice, that. Have you, seen, have you seen they've done the half and half shots this season? With the kit. Oh, have they? No, no, but that's they've interesting. Actually, they've got half and half shots. I've actually I've seen them the other week in a sports store. Won't name them, but they're quite nice. Quite nice. Um, the the shirt isn't great at the top, but the shots are nice. But it is a nice, it is a nice shirt. Man, when I look at that, I think of Samuel Etu when I see that shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think of Rome when I was getting battered. Mm. Messi, <laughs> Messi scoring a header for God's sake. Yeah. But it's a nice shirt. UNICEF is, it, is the sponsor. Much better when he had UNICEF, I think. Yeah, it's my favourite sponsor. kit I've seen, uh, I've seen Henri wear. That's your, of all all of them he's wore, that's your favourite. Yeah. Uh, then he yeah. went to America, didn't he? America. You didn't send me any of them. Did I not? <laughs> no, you didn't. I thought I sent you three of them. No, you sent me... Must have come through. Well, Monaco Arsenal. Shall we plough through it without an image? You can talk about it, yeah. Basically, he's wearing New York Red Bulls kit, big and red, massive Red Bulls logo on it. Um, big and red. Yeah, typical American kit, very Formula One, which is that what which is what the brand's about, isn't it? Red Bulls. Was he in the same team as Bradley Wright Phillips? Yeah, I think he was. I think he was. He must have yeah. been. His brother of his was there for the donkeys, weren't he? Yeah, he broke all sorts of goal-scoring records out there, didn't he? Shawnee yeah, right, right, right joined him as well, didn't he, for a season? Yeah, I think he did. For a little bit, yeah. yeah. All right, then, well, then there's a the France um, kit. France 1998. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you want, for, you want for to put a France listeners, shirt they'll have to imagine it. Really but... Yeah. I can't someone? believe you weren't going to put a French, a French shirt in there. That's well, was, really strange. I was, I was sticking domestic when I didn't want to go international. No, but, um, but I think you know, he won the World Cup. He won the Euros for France. Definitely yeah, deserve yeah. a French shirt in there. Well, well, this kit is iconic. And I think everybody's had this kit. Or the away version of it. Um, when they won it. He's had some odd numbers on, really, hasn't he? Mm, I don't yeah, mind but... him in number 12. And when he returned back to Arsenal on loan... He wore number 12, yeah. which I sort of quite mm-hmm. liked. It's not like he brought him full circle, but um, I don't mind that number on him, strangely. No. And it's, <clears throat> France, France, there's certain national teams that have sort of squad numbers, isn't there? So every time you play for them, you always wore number 12. 
Well, it's obviously, like England, it's always one to eleven in friendlies and stuff like that, and then they do squad numbers for for, for tournaments. But France, I think Spain are another one. They always have squad numbers. You think of Xavi and in- Iniesta with six and eight. Obviously, Xavi Jav- uh, wearing eight, Iniesta six, which is weird considering they were the opposite for the club team. But yeah, France, uh, 98, like I say, it is an iconic shirt. You know, you think of Zidane, Petit in that final against Brazil. Mm. Uh, I didn't know too much about Army back then. I, did, it, I didn't even know, well, I knew, but obviously... I can't remember when it was. I didn't know right away that he, he actually won the World Cup. It took me a while to find that out a bit more about him and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if he even played. Did he play a massive part? I can't even really remember. I remember him playing against yeah. South Africa and Saudi Arabia in the first two group games, yeah. or the second two, the second two group games. Massively memorable games, yeah. I remember them. Here's, I mean, this is probably a discussion for another time, but just thinking about his squad number... He wouldn't suit being a number nine. If you give him number nine, it just wouldn't look right with Henri. No. no. Pr- perhaps number, 10, maybe. 11. 11. 11. 11. Yeah. I think seven, number nine. nine but seven, nine eight, wouldn't 10, look 11. right. No, no, I don't think he'd suit number eight for me. Not eight. No. no. You're thinking of Carl Henry, the centre midfielder. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. His, co- his cousin, yeah. <clears throat> but I like that shirt. Big fan of it. He's, 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 had, he's had some good ones. Is our, um, is our Terry, Terry Henry. Some decent shirts. Like you say, not a big fan of the Juve ones. Or mainly the Arsenal ones. It took him to go to Barca before you rated him. But yeah. some good shirts. Um, yeah, so there we go. That was uh, Suits You, Sir. And it's this week it was uh, Mr. Terry Henry. <laughs> All right, before we bugger off then, uh, we'll do what our new game that we... Well, see, they're all new, aren't they, really? Because the podcast is new, but to us, they're not, because the others, we did obviously a few pilots and that, so they all seem like the mainstays for us. But the shirt impressions, uh, we played it the other week with um, Sean guessing the shirts that James had given me his first players that came to mind. This week, um, James has given... Sean the shirts before the show. I'm going to have a look at them now and come up with the first player that I think comes to Sean's mind. Could be anyone, honestly. Look at them. Yeah, it could be absolutely anyone. It's it's really yeah. a tricky one. Um, so what I'll do is uh, any order, James, or is the ones in particular you wanted? Mate? Doesn't really matter. One thing I will say, just as a caveat to this, a variation on a theme: um, the sponsorships or sort of the. Um, well, yeah, the sponsorships on the kits basically and uh, either defunct or obsolete now. Um, you'll see what I mean when we show them. But that was the theme behind these three kits. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. So I like the fact you've gone for a theme. I think we'll keep that running through the, uh, the feature every time we do it. Uh, so I'll get the first one up now. Do you want to describe so this that? This is Charlton Athletic and it's the 0203 home kit. I'm assuming all sports isn't a thing anymore, right? No, it's not now. Not for a long, it's long time. Gone. And and that's my idea behind the theme. So it's Can the I... Coxball Teeth, um, Charlton Athletic. As I say, this one they were a Premier League team, I believe, and it's yeah. got quite and it's quite simple. But I I, I I quite like that kit to be fair. Um, just got the simple sort of white line across the uh, across the arms and sort of down it's down the piping. ribs there. So can I um, tell my old sports wanna... story? Yeah, of course you can. So obviously, all sports were massive sports store in the is it nineties, early two thousands. Uh, and when I was, how old would I have been? I was young. I was going for an in, a job interview, like a part time job while I was at college. Uh, it was one in Manchester City Centre, facing the Marks and Spencers. Um, I was in there. I had an interview, not important, but the interview went great. Got offered the job. Stood at the door. It was quite a small store, so I stood at the door. And oh, I have to mention this time. I had cornrows. It's when I had my cornrows. Okay, ah, um, good days. Um, Man of days. Um, good old days. Um, so I stood at the door, waiting to to speaking to the manager, waiting to leave. Who walks past? Mr. David Beckham walked straight past me. Do you reckon you inspired me? his cornrows? If you let me finish my story, James. This is <laughs> Sorry. What, 
You've sorry. ruined the absolute punchline, you swat. Oh, sorry. So he walks past, we exchange glances, he nods, I nod, you know, pleasantries and all that. And then not too long later, he rocks up with cornrows. So all I'm saying is, I'm not saying I was the inspiration, but I'm not saying I'm not the inspiration for David. <laughs> Which, you know, so fashion, fashion trendsetter, am I? Who knows? I'm not going to say I am, but you know, the evidence is there pretty much. Because you would never have met another person with cornrows over those few weeks. Well, maybe. I mean, Gary Neville wasn't know. having him, was he? So. <laughs> no. Uh, could you imagine him with him? He'd look like a twat, wouldn't he? I don't know. Perhaps much. if someone wants to mock that up for us, that'd be quite nice. Love, I'd love to see that, yeah. But, yeah, that's all I'm saying. That's my all sports story. Um, so, going back to this, though, uh, let's... So, what, let what player do you think Sean picked for... That so I'll two or three home kit. So do you have the squad up there? Because I, obviously I can try and think of players I think played in this this team two thousand two two thousand three. I so, don't uh, have the squad. I can have a quick look at the squad though. Oh, it's for okay. You. Um, right. So the first one I think of would be uh, was Matt Holland there then? I think Matt Holland. I'm just gonna have a look at the players now, very quickly on Wikipedia. That's how I think. Uh, I'm trying to find him quickly. <laughs> it's all right. No, I, I can't see him on the there, list. Was that it? Switch dead. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Jasper Blomqvist was there then, actually, looking at it. Do you know what? For some reason, that was in my head, Jasper Blomqvist, because it's, re- it's weird that he played for Charlton, but it's one thing I always remember about him. But um, I won't. I won't say Jasper Blomqvist. I don't think Sean would probably know unless he's had a proper scan and had a look. Um, who else would have been there then? This, Sean, this, came, this came to me within a third of a second. Sean Bartlett. Sean was he there then? Uh, that South African striker. He Sean was there. Bartlett. He was there. Was Jonathan Johansson there then? That's, he was there then. He was there then. That's the one. <laughs> That that is who I would say, Jonathan Johansson. I would I had say. A back, I had there a you go. Klaus Jensen as yeah. well. For the for the game, Sean, probably just wait till I said my answer first, mate. Oh. Before, <laughs> before you, you cheat, you said it. Yeah, it, I, I'm, I'm going. I'm going through who's playing, but then right. I've not. That might not have been my answer, you see. But yeah, I probably would have. I probably would have said. We can tell. Probably would have said Jonathan Johansson. Yeah, for that one. Yeah, so yeah, well, that's, that's what Sean said I've quite, got, quite I've quickly. Got, I've not got a very good poker face, I'm afraid. It's fine. With that one. Just just let me get my answer out first before you jump in. It's okay. Okay, your next one. I'm going to go for this one. Let's do it. Let's share this one. In anticipation, I'm looking away, but I'm trying to get up the squads. So, perfect. <laughs> so, this is Wigan Athletic, and this is the 0607 home kit. Obviously, it's got JJB on there, which is now defunct. Yeah. Um, who do you think Sean said first came to mind when he looked at this kit? I didn't realise JJB made the kit as well. Oh, I knew that. And it's one thing I hate. There's only I've only ever known t- two teams that do that. Sponsor and manufacturer made the same. Wigan and Bolton with Reebok. I don't know of any others that I can think of. The yeah. only uh, by the way, I don't have any stories about footballers seeing me in a JJB and then change uh, nicking my hairstyle on this one. I'm afraid oh, that's a shame. Yeah, oh uh, six, oh seven. So this is this is season we beat them in the League Cup final. Oh, that was oh four, oh five, was it? Maybe or oh five, oh six. Don't know. Um, <clears throat> but right away, I'm thinking Tony Valencia would have been there then, wouldn't he? Let's have a quick scan of the squad. Oh, he was he was on loan from Villarreal that season. <clears throat> um, Leighton Baines would have been there. Um, was, was Leighton Baines there? I'm sure, he must have been there around that time. <clears throat> no, I'd be well oh, yeah, he was there. Sorry, he was. He was, there, he was yeah. there. Heskey would have been there that time. Heskey was there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, they had that. African strike was Senegalese, was it Henri Camara? He must have been there. Yeah, then. he was there. I'm trying to go through this. Can you get are you allowed keepers or does it have to be players that wore that? Just that wore I would that say it's players that wore that. And it, he's not picked a goalkeeper if that helps. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. Did Amir Zaki um, play that season? Who, sorry? Amir Zaki. Amir Zaki. The Egyptian centre forward. 
Um, I don't believe he did, looking at the list of players. No. Right, okay, no. it's a tricky one then. Um, oh, I've got someone in my head and I can't think of who, who he is. A defender. Oh, what's he called? You're thinking of a New Zealand guy, aren't you? No, no. He's like... So you're thinking of the Dutch one? The Dutch no, one. Not, not are you. Like, what is he called? Dezeu. Dezeu, that's the one. Are you and Dezeu, isn't it? No. He's another one. Like a real English... Oh, he would have been old by the time he played. <laughs> Fitz Hall. David Unsworth, was he oh, there? Unsworth. Yeah. David Unsworth was there, yeah. See, if Sean knows about that, I think it would be David Unsworth. Okay. I'm gonna go David, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go David Unsworth, yeah. Well, I can confirm you have said the name. Oh it's Heskey. Sean it? said Emil Heskey. Biggie H. Biggie H. Yeah, Emil Biggie H. H. I should have known. Hey, I'm one I'm one for I'm one for two. Better than you last week, Sean. Isn't Absolutely. It? Um, I'm good about it's that. It's weird how JJ. It's weird how JJB have, have gone in it, and all sport and um, JD is still around. Because I always used to think JJB was like the elite sports shop. Always seemed like a bigger shop, didn't it? Yeah. And was, is it DW now, isn't it? Yeah, Dave Whelan. Yeah. Um, I don't. It just, it just reminds me a bit like a Sports Direct, really. It had this yeah. Very similar vibe, but JD was more always more classy, a bit more upmarket with the trainers and. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not surprised he stuck around. Okay, yeah. So, <clears throat> your yeah, last kit then. One. The last kit? Yeah. This is, is easy, I kit. Tottenham Hotspur, home kit, and this um, this one. Oh, my God, let me get the year for you. Um, it's 0203 home kit. Right, okay. It's, this was the skin tight kit, if you remember. Yeah, um, I think Kappa, Kappa did well with a skin tight there. They normally make loose kits, don't they? So I, if you I, I want would, again, yeah. if you want to throw some names at me from the squad that you think might have been there, because I've got the squad up here, and one of my all-time favourite goalkeepers was part of this squad. Casey Keller. Casey Keller was Obviously. number thirteen, so he was backup goalkeeper this yeah. season. Right. Okay. See, it's tricky. This one was Steve Stephen Carr still there? Yeah, he, he would have won. Was. Maurizio Torico, was he there? Yeah, he was there, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you've got before Michael Carrick, wasn't it? Was it season before Michael Carrick? Or was was he I there? Think he, wore that, he wore that kit, I think. I know he wore some of the Thompson ones and Kappa. I don't know if it was the season after. This is the season that West Ham got relegated and they all kind of jumped ship. I can't see Carrick in this squad. Was he, 20, was he 24? He would have been 24, would he? That's that season, I think. Yeah, so in that case, then, no, because someone else is not. Okay, so not Carrick. Robbie Keane was there then, wasn't he? Yes. Robbie yes. Keane. Uh, was Sheringham still about? He was. He yeah. was at Pompey, Number 10 then, that season. No, he was there, wasn't he? Um, and then you've obviously got Ledley King. Ledley yeah. King, yeah. Right. right. So he's not Sheringham. I would have said Sheringham, but he's not Sheringham because you thought he was at Pompey. I'm going to say Ledley King. You're going to say Ledley King. You know what this yeah. kit reminds me of? And it's one of the reasons I picked it. Oh, by the way, Thompson is now Tui, uh, T-U-I, oh, yeah. Yeah. the um, holiday company. Um, I always think of Anthony Gardner. Don't ask me why, but that's what I always think of. Yeah. The correct answer, Sean picked Robbie Keane. Ah, oh, of course he did. And I had Gus, Gus Poyet as a backup. Did he play in that kit, Gus Poyet? I don't know, but I can see him in it. <laughs> Gus Poyet, yeah, he was there that season. He did, number four. Jamie Redknapp as well, oh, Stefan Everson, Sergi Rebrov, Darren Anderton. Oh, yeah. Stefan Freund, Rowan Ricketts, Simon Davis. Got it. Uh, just, uh, just out of curiosity, Sean, obviously I mentioned Case Keller was backup keeper. Do you know who was number one that season for Spurs? What year was it? 0 2 0 3. Is it Aurelio Gomez? No. It was oh, Neil really Sullivan. Know. Neil Sullivan, yeah, still. And then did Paul Robinson go the season after? I think. I think it was oh, well, and then he went to there, yeah. One out of three. I'll take that. I'm on the leaderboard. I'm winning so far. You're there. Sean got. So I'm guessing it's um who's guessing next week? you, James, isn't it? You'll be guessing. I'll be guessing uh, Sean, Sean uh, I'll, next week. I'll give the kits and the theme. 
yeah so it'll be me it'll be me doing the uh the, the answer to you. great great game i love this game it's great yeah um, trying to get in the mind of sean is quite difficult um but i think i did all right one, one out of three i'll take you were close okay. as well you were close and i said yeah, i said i said the other two so i'll take that one uh okay so that was your impressions Let's get rid of that bloody shirt, shall we? I don't need that no more, boys. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. That's the end of episode two. Then um, I enjoyed that. We ran quite long. I like it. We've gone quite long in this episode. We had a lot to talk about. Um, how have you felt? Enjoyed it. Good. Enjoyed it as always. Yeah. yeah. Please yeah. keep oh, the feedback like coming good. on the socials because uh, it does yeah. make a difference. Yeah. Please do. Please do like and subscribe on YouTube, Get, leave a comment, let us know if you agree or disagree with any shirts we've shown or what shirts you think we should be showing and any of the features. Also on the audio podcast, a like and subscribe and also a review helps a long way in making us grow. You can follow us um, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok and Twitch and it's at Talking Kit everywhere, that's where we live. Uh, so yeah, get involved in the show, let us know about your favourite kits, we will feature some um, and we'll be providing more talking kits episodes very soon so yeah well i'll see you soon boys enjoy the rest of the weekend and the hot weather and uh i'll see you soon